Hello, good afternoon and welcome to Mayday Live here on TV3. My name is Park Wissiasari. Thanks very much for joining us. Coming up in the next 60 minutes. Police set to unravel mystery behind missing Takwadi girls as it readies to present its DNA findings. Meanwhile, none of the other regions apart from Accra have DNA testing laboratories, a worry for Ghana's health system. And elsewhere, British lawmakers meeting to stop Prime Minister Boris Johnson from pursuing what they cast as a calamitous no-deal Brexit. All right, uh, we're going to bring you the latest details of all these stories, plus many more in the next 60 minutes. Remember that we're streaming live on Facebook. You can also join us with your views, comments, and suggestions on any of our top stories this hour. We're very active on social media, our handle is TV3GH, on Facebook and on Twitter. Now, Western Region's major referral center, the Fianquanta Hospital and other major hospitals in the region do not offer DNA testing services. Now, families of the four missing Takwadi girls will therefore face a Herculean tax should they press on for an independent DNA machining, uh, matching test, I beg your pardon, at least in the Western Region. The Ghana Police Service is preparing to make public results of the DNA matching test after samples of the families of the four Takrad missing girls were taken. The DNA matching test became necessary following the recovery of human remains from two separate hideouts of 31-year-old Nigerian Samuel Wolves, the suspect behind recent kidnap cases in the western region. The four families have demanded for an independent test after that of the Ghana Police Service, a demand the service has agreed to. But what are the options available if they are to conduct an independent DNA matching test? Efian Kwanta Regional Hospital is the major referral center in the western region. Do you offer DNA services in any form? No, at the moment we don't have the facilities to uh, carry out DNA tests in the hospital. Okay. Yeah, so we don't we don't do DNA tests here at all. Okay, but um, if you can tell, is a major referral center for Western Region. Don't you see this as a disincentive? Uh, at the moment, I would say it would be ideal if we had it here. Yes, yeah, because of the paternity issues that come up every now and then yes but requests for DNA tests uh, actually haven't been coming very much families of the four missing Takrade girls could face an uphill task if they go ahead with their requests for an independent DNA matching after the results from the Ghana police service are out now mind you they express that willingness for an independent test but for Western Region, we doubt that very much because as you heard from the administrator of the major referral health center here in the Western Region, that is the Ephraim Quanta Regional Hospital, Michael Dan. So they don't offer such service. Well, we'll proceed to some other uh, well-known health centers here in the Western Region to find out whether we'll be lucky. Another hospital also known to offer specialized services is the Takrade Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority, Kapoha Hospital. Unfortunately, there is no such service on offer. In the wake of the discovery of hydrocarbons in commercial quantities offshore Cape Three Points in the Western Region, one hospital that upgraded its services to be able to take care of the health needs of expatriate workers is the Sakamon Hospital. Sadly, DNA testing is not among services the hospital offers. This is about the Fort Health facility we just visited and we've not been lucky. According to authorities here at the Takrade Hospital, they don't also offer such service. 
For the Western Region Deputy Director of Clinical Care, Dr. Emmanuel Atudodo, it is not surprising that there are no DNA services at the region's major referral center. I'm not worried. Hospitals exist solely to provide diagnostic tests, malaria, TB, HIV, AIDS, etc., etc. So if it had been that those tests were not available, I would be worried. But genetic tests, the DNA tests for identification of human beings, a specialized area. So where that need arises, it will be, samples will be taken and then sent to the appropriate well-equipped lab to do it. That's it. So I'm not worried at all. But, but in the foreseeable future, would you recommend such service to hospitals like the Ephraim County Regional Hospital and other regional hospitals? Not at all. Not at all. The number of times that a hospital will need such a test is very minimal. You don't waste capital on, on it. No. You can always outsource, take sample, and then go for it to be done in a specialized area. It doesn't make any economic sense at all. Obviously, families of the four missing Takrada girls will indeed be faced with an uphill task if they press on with their demand for an independent DNA test. As you just saw, all the major health centers that we visited here in the Western region do not offer such service. In fact, what we are picking is that DNA testing is a specialized service. Thus, the families will have to dig deeper into their pockets if they are still hell-bent on conducting an independent test. Eric Yoj, TV3 News, Takrade. Right, we're still, in while, we're still in a while longer on this developing story. Meanwhile, public health facilities across the country lack the capacity to run DNA tests. Cases which require such tests have to be referred to Accra. William Evans Income reports from Kumasi. So in the moment of doubt, one thing must help establish the truth. Dioxiribonucleic acid, also known as DNA. But unfortunately, Confanochi Teaching Hospital, which is the major referral center here in the northern sector, doesn't have the facility. So, what happens to cases which require proof through a DNA test? Cases within the Ashanti Regional Police Command, which require such tests, are rare though. But the few are sent to the Kolobu Teaching Hospital. This year, two women were allegedly murdered at Abrepo a suburb of Kumasi, which required the police to run a DNA test on a suspect as part of its investigations. The samples had to be sent to Accra, and the results is yet to be produced. The most recorded DNA-inclined cases are paternal denials and neglect. In all these instances, cases are referred to Accra for determination. The social welfare department plays a critical role in this process, often directed by the courts to assist. Such cases are not many. Last year we had four cases, January to December, and this year up to April we've done four. Yeah, but after April we haven't had any such case. We have been sending the cases to Tama. That's where Tama. Lashibi area. Head of laboratory services at the Konfanochi Teaching Hospital, Dr. NSAJ is hoping that a major DNA referral center is established in the northern sector of the country. As an institution, yes, we are working very hard in establishing it and uh, I do admit that at this point that it's not ready and uh, certainly it's affecting job and the work that we do. It is unfortunate that we haven't started yet but it is not too late. And uh, as a directorate, we have that vision of starting this service. Until such a center is opened, all DNA-inclined cases would continually be referred to Accra. All right, so this is one of our top stories for today, and we're going to stay heavy on it. Uh, I've just been joined on Skype right now by Dr. Samuel Ajililo. He's a forensic uh, clinical psychologist with the University of Ghana. Thank you, Dr. Samuel, for your time. It's good to have you. Uh, if you can hear me, sir, uh, there's a lot of anticipation ahead of this announcement uh, by the Ghana Police Service. Uh, what, should, what should we expect, really, as a psychologist?
Well, I'm afraid uh, we're unable to uh, reach him on the uh, on Skype. We'll try and re-establish contact with him. Meanwhile, the Forensic Sciences Department of the University of Cape Coast is to train the police service in crime scene investigations and forensics. The head of department, Dr. Richmond Afuakwa, who disclosed this in an interview with TV3's uh, Selma Menya, maintained it will ensure crime scene management is carried out professionally. So when we say forensics or forensic investigations, what does it really entail? Yeah, forensics simply means uh, applying science to law. So what we do is science, basically, and then uh, its application in legal matters, civil and criminal cases for that matter. So we do general science, I mean uh, basic science including DNA, toxicology, pharmacology, what, whatever. I mean whatever particular science there is can be applied in a forensics so a matter of just applying the science in legal matters in conducting forensics uh, how long is it supposed to take uh, you see uh, we, ha we have to be careful looking at the duration because uh, when you are conducting an investigation you want to exhaust every possible avenue in uh, the conduct of this investigation so the police, I am sure, after uh, getting the human remains, would want to go step by step. And by step by step, they will have to do a lot of things, a lot of preliminary analysis, a lot uh, before they go into the confirmatory analysis. All right, so how detailed or deep can a forensic investigation be? So finding the crime scene, going to the crime scene, managing the crime scene, conducting the investigation, picking the evidence from the crime scene, bringing them to the lab whenever necessary, conducting the laboratory investigation, and then giving out a report. Well, we've heard some people say that um, the way the police, or the way and manner the police went about uh, the processes, so far as the Takradi girls are concerned, uh, it looks like they tampered with evidence. They actually sucked out water and all of that. The processes, what you know so far, would you say that um, that was the, the best way? The reason I'm at East Legon is to secure some form of funding to train the police, to train CID in crime scene management so that the crime scene management itself can be done expertly. Uh, we can then say with all confidence that whenever there is crime and the scene presents itself, we have experts in the police service who will go there and then conduct effective management and investigation and come out with the correct uh, evidence. If, for example, uh, there is a crime like this particular one and if the girls were killed the very moment they they were abducted the crime scene management and investigation should be able to pick this but if you don't have the aspect to do this if you don't have the tools to do this how how are you going to do it do it all right thank you very much so i have been speaking with a forensics expert he's the head of the forensic department of the university of cape coast dr richmond afuakwa the Selam Amenya. We'll, we'll return to Skype now, and I've been joined by Dr. Justice uh, Tankabe, who's a criminologist and a policing expert. He joins us live from the United Kingdom. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for your time. So, the policing time pass has been very swift when it comes to investigations uh, relating to its own people, uh, but not very similar effort is seen when it comes to other crimes, like this. This, for instance. Does this have any way of affecting the image of the police service? Uh, thank you very much for, for having me. Um, of course, when people become victims of crime, what they expect from the police is um, a swift uh, reaction and for the police to treat them in ways that they consider to be uh, respectful and recognizes uh, sometimes the trauma that they have, they have been through. And I think when we take a specific case of the tax credit um, incident. Um, I think even the police themselves will recognize that the way that they have handled uh, the, the victim's family have not been uh, satisfactory. Um, of course, uh, crimes uh, differ. The details they are different. The information police receive 
uh, will be different. And therefore, it's sometimes very hard to make that kind of comparison. But I think what any police service will try to do, including the Ghana Police Service, is to respond uh, swiftly in ways that recognize that uh, people have um, expectations and that it is their responsibility to try to respond to those uh, uh, expectations. Certainly, keeping families or victims of families <coughs> updated about investigations is, is important. Right, Dr. Sangabe, uh, kindly hold on for me uh, on the Skype. Uh, we've also been joined on Skype by uh, Dr. Samuel Ajalilo, who is a forensic uh, clinical psychologist at the University of Ghana. Uh, sir, I, just briefly, uh, as I mentioned early on, there's a lot of anticipation ahead of this announcement, the outcome of the DNA test by the police service. Uh, the family, for instance, is one of the most interested parties in this test. Uh, how should they be psyched up ahead of this announcement? How right goes? Good afternoon, and thank you for, I mean, it's, it's a fact that right from the beginning of this incident, the family has gone through a lot of trauma. They have been highly traumatized, and initially there seems not to be any support until the police decided to mobilize their resources to go and provide some support in terms of behavioral interventions. So the outcome of this DNA or the outcome of the investigation by the police with respect to the DNA, um, yes, we are, there are basically two outcomes that could, um, it could be negative or it could be positive. Whichever way, the family is positioned to go through another transition. And this, I mean, experience another episode of stress, whichever the outcome is. So what do we expect, even prior to any announcement, is for a team of behavioral experts comprising clinical psychologists, counselors, therapists, who go there, sometimes take this people through a whole cycle of process, which could last even about one week before the announcement is made. If the announcement is made, that doesn't end the whole process. Whatever it is, the families continues to need the support. And so we expect that this will be provided even after the announcement is made. Otherwise, the stress they through will be compounded, and this eventually will be affecting their, their health and their well-being in totality. So we expect, from where we sit, that the Ghana Police Service or other agents that are involved in this will put in all measures before the announcement and even after the announcement as we prepare for um, this whole investigation. I, I guess the I guess the easier burden will be for the family to know that these bodies indeed belong belong to their their girls. It will at least bring some finality to the issue, wouldn't it? Yes, but whatever it is, then the the conclusion is that my daughter is dead. Now that sparks a new level of anxiety. That sparks a new level of grieving process, and for them to come to terms practically in a more efficient way such that their eventual health will not be compromised. There's a need for a systemic intervention that goes beyond just the assessment or the intervention that we provided before the announcement, but that goes after the announcement. So yes, if the news is that this is confirmed and these are your daughters, then we have moved to a different level of stress. We have moved to a different level of difficulties. Uh, all right. Um, that's difficult. You need to be identified and handled. Dr. Samuel Ajilo, I'd ask you to hold on for me. Let me come back to uh, Dr. Tankabe, who is a criminologist and also a policing expert. Um, Hello. We're having some difficulty with our Skype. Uh, if you can hear me, uh, Dr. Justice Tankabe, who's a criminologist and a policing expert, uh, I'm afraid uh, we've lost Dr. Tankabe. But let me just uh, come in studio now and try and engage um, one other uh, person who is joined us. Uh, he is... Okay, so I've just been told by uh, Dr. I've just been told that Dr. Tankabe has joined us back on Skype. Dr. Tankabe, my final question to you: uh, There's been a lot of back and forth with regards to the professionalism of the Ghana Police Service, uh, the way it's handled all this process leading up to this DNA test. 
how should the police itself position its work so that if it, it, it ends up that this and all the bodies of the girls, we still have some trust in the police service? Um, I think to build trust in the police service, we need to um, step back a little bit uh, from this particular incident. I think what this particular, of course, we should be interested in addressing the issues that Dr. Ajilolo has raised. How do we uh, address the psychological needs of uh, uh, the victims' families? But we move on from there to think about what sort of reforms are required to prevent other families from going through these uh, traumas and psychological stress uh, that the, uh, the current uh, victims' families have been through. And, and, and that requires us to go back to the issue that we've always been talking about, which is the need for much more thoughtful uh, reforms of the Ghana Police Service to invest in, in the training, in standards about how to deal with uh, victims, especially victims of violent crime. Uh, what mechanisms do we want to put in place to ensure greater accountability, to make sure that we can monitor and track how uh, officers at individual stations handle uh, some of these violent crimes. And that goes back in part to providing them with the needed resources to uh, making sure that they have the requisite training uh, to be able to address some of these uh, issues. And I think it's in the nature of scandals that they bring reform. And what we have failed to do historically is to take advantage of some of these tragic uh, incidents to bring in, in the kind of reforms that uh, uh, in the police. And I think, um, unfortunately, we appear to be repeating uh, this mistake of not taking advantage of this to think about the kind of reforms that might build confidence in the all right, gentlemen, I've got to say a big thank you to you for joining us. Dr. Justice Tankabe is a criminologist and also a policing expert. Joining us live from the uh, United Kingdom, as well as uh, Dr. Samuel Ajililo, who's a forensic uh, clinical psychologist with the University of Ghana. We're going to stay a while longer on this subject because in studio, I've also been joined by Adam Bona, who is a security analyst. He's been with us from the very start of this, uh, you know, this very sad story of the kidnapping of these three girls. Mr. Bona, thank you very much for joining us. I know you've been listening to these two gentlemen. Right. The police service, as I mentioned, there's been a, a lot of anticipation ahead of Thursday's announcement. Yeah. What if they don't come up with an announcement? What happens? Well, uh, we've got to be very careful uh, believing that we are going to have you know, uh, the police announcing to us mm. that they have a po positive match or a negative match, mm. because then you are dealing with science. And if, uh, you know, you ask the, those who specialize in DNAs and forensic, you know, some of these things, they will tell you that you, it goes through a lot of process. You need a reagent and sometimes uh, some of the reagents, depending on uh, how bad you evidence is. You might need stronger reagents to be able to do the cross-matching. And so we've got to be very careful uh, with, you know, hoping that the, the police is going to give us an announcement on Thursday. Could mm -hmm. be Thursday, could be after Thursday. Uh, but the truth is that as we speak, if they are not done, and assuming they are done by the close of day today or tomorrow, I'm not expecting them to give us any announcement at all uh, because I'm expecting them to break whatever news it is to the family, the families, victims, family. And least, then, you mean they should know first? Yes, yes, that is, I mean, that is the best international mm. practice. Mm. They are supposed to know first and the state must give them victims support in terms of the clinical psychologists just like uh, my other colleague from the University of Ghana did allude to, you know, making sure they are supported to go through a certain transition because at the, at the moment they are in a dilemma. Could be our family, might not be our family. And so sometimes it's difficult to accept the fact that this could be, uh, I mean, this could be 
our you know family member the, the, the former could be a lighter burden on the apply what it at least it will bring some finality to this matter wouldn't it well it is not as easy as you know you have you have asked no i mean because depending on the, if, if you listen to, there are about four families now involved. Mm. Previously, we were dealing with three. And if you, amongst even the, the three we knew of, amongst them, they had their own differences. Where, you know, some of them took a certain posture, others were a bit more relaxed. And so depending on uh, which category you belong to, even when it is announced to you that it is your family, chances are that you could say no because you realize that when this human, suspected human remains at the moment... Some of them uh, said that they were uh, so uh, certain the police would come exactly. and say, these are the uh, So I'm expecting the police to come out and say, these suspected human remains are indeed human remains. Right. Then the next thing is to tell us whose human remains are these and who are, you know, their family members. And so to be able to positively identify them. Some of them came out to say, no, uh, it cannot be our sister. What if it's just a psychological thing? They just don't want to possibly expect worse, which is that these are your girls. So it is the reason why we don't have to say uh, they, they should be expecting this because then chances are that it will bring finality to the case. Right. That should have been, you know, what, I mean, probably we should all be expecting. But, I mean, these are individuals and therefore you don't, even amongst probably one nuclear family, you would have maybe the father agreeing and the mother saying no or the sister saying no. So, so you so very much agree there's a lot of psychological work. Yes, a lot of on. psychological mm -hmm. work. A mm -hmm. lot is going to take time. Mm -hmm. If it's going to take time mm -hmm. because then you have some members of the family within the same family say no. Mm -hmm. And so the psychologist, the clinical psychologist would have to come in. It is their turn after the lab results comes out. It, it is it is the turn of the clinical psychologist to mm -hmm. come in and give them what I call the victim's mm -hmm. support. Right, we've got to move on, uh, uh, sir. Um, but my final question to I know you follow the workers of the police for quite some time now. To be frank with, with us all, are you very much impressed with the work of the police in this matter? Well, you see, it is difficult for me to say. Initially, I expressed a lot of reservations about the way and manner this whole investigation started. Especially if you had to go back to the genesis from the central region, from the western region, mm. you realize that there were a lot of systemic failures from the regional, uh, I mean, from where the incident took place, mm. where they had to go on a demonstration before it caught the nation's attention, attention. and then the, the headquarters, you know, came in and started pushing. And so for me, I rather would want to wait for the final results to come out. Then we can, you know, bullet them and do proper empirical analysis and say, from the region, these are the wrongs. And then when you come to the national, these are the wrongs. And so for now, I would want to concentrate on uh, let's wait and get the DNA results, either positive or negative. I hope we don't get a hanged mm -hmm. DNA result. But, right. you know, sometimes you could get a hanged DNA results mm -hmm. where uh, it doesn't show anything, mm -hmm. where you have something that's looks like human remains, mm -hmm. but the reagents you are using are not so strong enough to tell you whether they are human re remains or they are not human I've remains. I've got to say thank you to you. Adam Bona is a security analyst uh, joining us to do some analysis uh, of, you know, the kidnapping of the three girls in Takwadi. We're all anticipating that the police service will come on Thursday to give a, that all-important announcement. <laughs> Right, so away from uh, Takrade, let's go straight to South Africa, where xenophobic attacks recorded in Pretoria, South Africa, less than a week ago, has escalated to the capital, Johannesburg. Three people have been confirmed dead, according to sources. On Monday, another wave of violence broke out, forcing many to flee while non-South Africans under attack abandoned their businesses. Now several auto shops were set on fire. In the renewed wave of attacks, some foreign business owners received machete wounds and were rushed to the hospital for treatment. Foreign nationals, including Ghanaians, according to reports, now, lie, now live in fear. Uh, rogue indigents have resorted to looting. The attacks began last Tuesday as business owners in South Africa were overpowered by
attacked South Africans and hit with uh, metals and all kinds of objects in the central business districts. Well, Ghana's High Commissioner to South Africa, George A. C. Boateng, has been speaking to Ghanaians living in South Africa on the situation. I don't know the happenings, the current happenings. Very disturbing, uh, very unfortunate attacks on uh, foreign nationals. Uh, very, very I call it very, very unfortunate. But I appeal to my fellow Ghanaians to monitor situations carefully. Those who live around prone violence areas must take caution. And then those um, uh, also living around hotspots, what I would describe as places I would describe as hotspots, must also take caution and monitor uh, movement of most probably assailants. When there is any need for us to put in place contingency measures, I will describe, I will take it as contingency measures, assure, uh, be assured that they will do it. I have uh, capable, able members of staff who in all situations are ready to work. So if there should be any need of any contingency measure, I will put in place. All right, so you just had uh, Ghana's High Commissioner to South Africa there addressing the issue of xenophobic attacks in that region. Jakob Moro is a freelance journalist in South Africa and joins us live on Skype. Uh, I'm going to be interacting with him. Uh, Jakob, thank you very much for your time. I know you've been monitoring this development. Earlier, uh, Ghanaians in South Africa were accusing uh, the South African High Commission, that's the Ghana uh, embassy in South Africa, of uh, not responding to their concerns. At least he's spoken now. Are they satisfied? Um, we are, first of all, let me welcome all your viewers to the Republic of South Africa. Um, back to the question you did ask me, we are not satisfied, including myself, with the explanation being given to us by His Excellency, the High Commissioner to South Africa. First of all, that explanation came very late. It just came, that footage you just showed us on TV just came last night. We had it last night, which is Monday. This violence started or began on Sunday. It was Sunday afternoon that it came in. So we ask ourselves, what was he doing all that around? Why does he have to wait for this far long to issue such a warning? Already the entire country is in chaos. You don't even have access to transport. So if, let's say, you are living in a prone area, which for the past two, three years is, has been your location, and then uh, um, suddenly there's been these changes, you decided to flee the environment because you just heard a message from your ambassador. You have nowhere to go. So if we compare the message from our ambassador to that of the other embassies or the ambassadors, we realize ours is the very late. We don't know why we always take late action again. Is Jakob back? Hello, Jakob. Can you like it's from this country? Our government should put in probably a flight or error. Uh, I'm afraid we're having uh, terrible difficulties with the Skype uh, with uh, Jakob Moro, who is a freelance journalist in South Africa. Let's take a quick break. We'll return. Right, welcome back to the to make their life here on TV3. Let's now do some business news. And basket weavers on the switchback road at cantonment are yet to move after authorities, including the police, clamped down on them. I was there earlier today. Take a look. A couple of months ago, the police came in to uh, essentially relocate the people you see here. These are basket weavers. They use canes to weave baskets, 
and other materials for sale. And so they've been doing this business for the past five years now. And the structure you see there, the, the world structure you see there, was where they, uh, they used to be until the police came in to ask them to relocate. And so they've been in this business right here at this location uh, for just a little over a month now. And we came here today to find out uh, what has been business since you know they were relocated and if indeed this is where they asked them to come we're told the earlier place was um, a land belonging to um, a businessman and that was what has been secured uh, uh, for the businessman by the police so i'm here to speak to one of them the basket weavers to find out chief uh, good morning your life on TV3. Uh, a month ago, na police for no bear relocated more. Eh, what? Na na mo e eche hanum. Ana. Um, pachana ye wo fancy or magic ni wo inside. Okay. Uh, first na ye nje fancy biya, but some best three months ago, and a man be buy was here for the job. Na ono kwa land no documents e trace land ni ye wo ye owner. You know what they fire Labadi, and uh, Labadi municipal assembly or the Koho, a man for whom say was simply in front of sign say land and any day. You know, but my time say you free her that was you free her on the 15th of June. To a man, Brian or Bayana or who send the panel were handed Dawson into a side another month. I can home to another month in this year and the one Fabian count to a buyer and a buyer say. The next Sunday, you know, you have Sunday and the excavator, you know, by with police. I'm a boy at home by, you know, by demolishing her. After that, you know, na am so I'm a year and a man, you know, by a quano, the quano, you know, also here for management. As you heard from one of the basket weavers, this is a current situation since they were evicted from their uh, former location by the police about a month ago, and so they've had to move their, their, their materials here to do business, but they've got a difficulty working uh, from this place. Let me just speak to a final uh, one of them who is here uh, to also get his thoughts on business since they relocated. Uh, Chief Midas saying, since I'm about to business, is saying. Oh, it's a business. 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 Because you have to say, 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 you Blah, blah, yes. I ban it in a baby path for your own punk idea. A bad because I was such a tolerance. A more minor, a set is cancer, a sablon, minor, my own money, said a coy, because I said, I buy it. I ain't any clump on my edge, my own say a slab, I said. So bits me up, why I made my edge, my own pump party and cabaret because oh, you would you want to share a man, a mamma, so a china say bamboo and win a chrome mine. The same thing, you have different kinds of bamboo. I was gonna have see ya. You bet me that I develop your mind and my mind so I de. I too important because oh yeah yeah. But bet me I buy it now. If I to be cool and put us to bet me I yeah buy or my yeah. Now I de. I buy it my mind so I de. Let me have cool and see ya. All right, so uh, you just heard from them and what their concerns are, what their difficulties are uh, ever since they were evicted from their uh, former working place uh, to this uh, very place. Right from the switch back road in Cantonment, Park with Yasari, TV3. All right, so that report was filed about an hour ago at the switch back road in cantonment. So away from business, let's uh, go to parliament now. And the minority has hit back at Vice President Dr. Mamadou Baumia over his, over his recent attacks on former President John Mahama on the challenges facing the banking sector. Now addressing the media at a press conference, the opposition party is demanding a full disclosure of the 23 billion CDs spent in the cleanup of the sector. Messi darling local is there and joins me together with other members of the minority they raised quite a number of issues and i want him to run through as um run us through exactly some of the things they they said because they feel that the current government or current administration which is the mpp have not treated the banking sector crisis appropriately so honorable abdongo good afternoon and welcome to tv3 yeah, good afternoon and uh, good afternoon to your listeners okay so i first of all you raised some issues about the fact that um, you are not happy about the way the current administration is handling the um, banking crisis. You also talked about the fact that you are going to support your leader in establishing a financial sector conduct authority to regulate market conduct. Um, I think, per what you outlined, the Bank of Ghana is currently doing it. Setting up such an institution, wouldn't it be a duplication of the job the Bank of Ghana is already doing? 
Well, I, I, I don't know if Bank of Ghana is really doing anything in respect of what you're saying. Uh, what we are saying is what we call the predatory regulatory stance of the Bank of Ghana. We say predatory because they target certain financial institutions that don't look like the ones that they want, and they pursue them, and they collapse them. In fact, they punish financial institutions for being victims of Bank of Ghana's own conduct. And when Bank of Ghana engages in activities that lead to systemic impact on other financial institutions, what that simply means is that if Bank of Ghana takes a decision, and that decision then affects another entity, as a result of it, that entity now becomes difficult to run. Then Bank of Ghana now comes after you to then collapse you. It doesn't make sense. Okay. It simply doesn't make sense. And if you look at the Bank of Ghana itself, Bank of Ghana took the first banks in 2017. Do you know when Bank of Ghana now did an analysis of the interconnectedness of the financial sector? They did it in September, in October 2018. After they had taken first two banks, taking the second five banks, they have no, they had no clue what the interconnected death impact was. No. Okay so, okay, so they didn't even know, as we are taking these banks, how many financial institutions downstream are going to be impacted. What do we need to do in order to address the impact of these collapses on the ones downstream? They had no idea. They then took five of them, they still had no idea. And when they did the analysis of the interconnectedness after the five were taken, they picked just about 10, 15 top Mercy Dunn, local reporting live from Parliament. We'll bring you more of this in our subsequent bulletins. Let's take a break now. Thanks very much, Yafu Shulabi, for the very latest in sports news. Now to international news, and British lawmakers will on Tuesday try to stop Prime Minister Boris Johnson from pursuing what they cast as a calamitous no-deal Brexit, a challenge a senior government source said will prompt him to call for a snap election on October 14, more than three years since the United Kingdom voted to leave the European Union in a referendum. The outcome of the Brexit crisis remains uncertain, with a range of options from a turbulent no deal exit to abandoning the entire endeavor. Up next, we bring you entertainment news. Now, the National Chief Imam Sheikh Dr. Osman Nuhu Shaributu is to feature in a playwright Latif Abubakar's new theatre product, The Legends Play, to be staged on September 29. It will also feature accomplished men of God, the Most Reverend Charles Gabriel Palmer Bakil and Apostle Professor Opokunina as lead actors. Owusu has the details. In its 10th year, Globe Productions has excited and educated theatre goers with 14 hilarious and family oriented stage plays. Renowned playwright Latif Abubakar has announced a new theatre product to eulogize and celebrate Ghanaian change makers for their positive strides and impact on society. Dubbed the Legends Play, the project will chronicle the life experiences of legends and role models with a view to inspire the spirit of virtuousness in others. The objectives of the Legends Play. One is to inspire to entertain and educate hundreds of people with real life experiences of our legends. The people we call legends are basically those who have transformed lives and then made changes in our society. Two is to celebrate our legends. The maiden edition of the would-be annual play will celebrate centenarian and national chief imam Sheikh Dr. Osman Nuhu Shariputu. The personalities themselves are going to play a role in the play. They're surely going to be on stage performing. That is how unique the legends play is. And the fact that at the end of each play, we are actually going to honor the legend with a lifetime achievement award. If you want to see how Sheikh Dr. Osman Sharabutu is going to act, be there yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you know. But there are also other lead actors. Archbishop Palmer Buckle is oh. going to be in there. And then, of course, Apostle 
Professor Opoku Onyina will also be there. I myself will be at the background. <laughs> <laughs> Chairman of the National Peace Council, Most Reverend Professor Emmanuel Asante, extolled the statesman, describing him as a unifier and a proud advocate of peace. These are people who do things on the quiet, but they are committed to it, and they do so with a sense of responsibility for the development of this nation. These are the people, this project is intended to present to Ghanaians and also to inspire others to understand that you can't be a hero without making noise. Spokesperson of the National Chief Imam, Sheikh Arimeyao Shaibu, is excited about the new play. His piece has, has infected us and now is an inspirer to us, a mentor in the path of peace that we all want to work on that. The much hyped play will take place at the Kempinski Hotel Gold Coast City on September 29 this year. Well, we'll wait to see that play. Thanks very much for watching. This has been Midday Live. We came to you live from our studios here at TV3 at Dataway in Kanda, Accra. My name is Parker Siasari. For more news, you can log on to our website, www.3news.com.